Hey everyone, you just tuned in to the NetSuite podcast. I'm your host, Kendall Fisher, and I'll be joined by Cheryl Arsvold, the Vice President of Finance for ProPoint, a salon management software company. We're discussing what research suggests is the number one top priority for finance leaders right now, advanced data analytics. That's really nothing new for Arsvold, a self-proclaimed data nerd, I'm air quoting right now, who's always dug deep into data to help make big business decisions. However, she will explain why she thinks advanced data analytics has become a high priority right now and why growing businesses especially struggle with extracting the right data and then actually using it to move the needle. Arsvold will then explain ProPoint's history with NetSuite and how it helped the business increase efficiency, streamline processes, and continue to scale to more than 6,000 customers globally. She'll dive into how she uses Sweet Analytics workbooks on a day-to-day basis to drive data-backed decisions that have supported this growth, as well as the ways she's leveraged these workbooks to monitor salon activity and ProPoint's cash flow throughout the pandemic. You won't want to miss this one, so stay tuned. You're listening to the NetSuite Podcast, where we discuss what's happening within NetSuite, why we're doing it, and where we're heading in the future. We'll dive into the details about the software and the people at NetSuite who are behind all the moving parts. We'll also feature customer growth stories, discussing the ups and downs of running a company and how one integrated system can help your business continue to scale. Hi, Cheryl. Thanks so much for joining us. Hi, Kendall. Thank you for having me. Looking forward to diving in here to data visibility and sweet analytics. Um, I'm super excited to do so. Um, and I know that it has helped your leadership team over there at ProPoint make some crucial decisions. But first, yep. can you tell our listeners a little bit about ProPoint? Yeah, um, ProPoint is a company that was originally founded in 1999 by a man named Matt Rogers, who was a multi-location salon owner. He actually wrote our flagship software called Super Salon to manage his six salons that were in Alaska. He couldn't drive to them. So he wrote the software to manage multi-location. So that is our differentiator still today. We are high value point of sale software for hair salons and we manage um, multi-locations very well. So we help people grow their businesses and their stores. Very scalable. Wow. What a story. I love that. Um, yeah. Now, as, as VP of finance over at ProPoint, what does your role entail? How are you helping make some big d- business decisions and, and moving the needle over there? Yeah. Um, you know, that's, it's so important these days, you know, the, the name of this podcast is data. And so that mm-hmm. that's my life. I am a data geek. Um, I spent my first few years, I I'm coming up four and a half years, I believe at, at pro point. And when I started, you know, they needed some, um, to up their game a little bit, so to speak from a back office perspective. So I spent a couple of years getting systems and process in place, but of course, um, now my job is really to get, accurate, timely, relevant data in front of my team and to figure out, you know, what the patterns are telling us, how to use them for decision-making. Um, that's, that's the large part of it. Yeah. You know, research suggests that the number one priority for finance leaders right now is advanced data analytics, which to you might seem weird. Cause you're like, I've always been doing this, but, right. um, you know, <laughs> And in and, and truly making data-driven de- decisions is, is, is always important for any business, but yeah. why do you think it's so crucial right now? Like, why is this the number one priority right now? What's changed to make it a top priority for many companies? Yep. Yep. And to your point, I, it's always been on the top of my list in my experience, but I think, you know, I think a lot of things has changed. I think the pace of ch- pace or the, I'm sorry, the pace of change has changed. So yeah. technology is changing, business is changing, environment is changing. 2008 happened, the pandemic happened. Um, we're grasping at data to help us make decisions. So many of these things have never been modeled. You know, we're, right. we're creating them as we go and it all comes down to data. Where's your data coming from? How accurate is it? Where's the pattern in it? I say that all the time, um, but how can we use it? So with all these things that have happened lately, businesses really have to be asking themselves how to get better data and how to use it. 
I think it's a natural progression. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I think even, you know, we've never been through a lot of these things before. And I think a lot of companies are kind of pulling for like, how can I, even if we, something happens in the future that we never saw coming, how can I be better prepared for it? Um, we're seeing that for sure, for sure too. Um, what would you say are some common challenges or obstacles that arise for growing businesses around like extracting data? And then, like you said, then actually using that data for decision-making, because it's one thing to pull a report and be like, here are the numbers, but it's another thing to actually move forth and do something with it. Yeah. Yeah. That's such a great question. And I think that there's a lot of common obstacles to it. Um, one of them is, you know, we're, we're just really firmly entrenched in um, our history of data from financial statements and P and L's, which is by definition, a lagging indicator. So switching your thought process to think of leading indicators, what are, what are things that might change that would give me a heads up quicker and, and then looking at your data and knowing your data. So one of the first biggest obstacles is just what is your data? Do you even know what you have in your mm-hmm. systems? What kind of tools do you have? How hard is it to get that data point that you think might be a good one? Mm-hmm. And then, you know, I am the queen of overkill. Mm-hmm. I, I'm big on, you know, kitchen sink reports. When I set up my systems, I grab whatever data I can get because I might want it someday. And that's yeah. not a good thing. You know, you can, you can drown in too much data and, you know, start focusing on the wrong thing when you have too much of it. So, you know, finding your good data is, is hit and miss trial and error. It, it does take a lot um, to gather and mm-hmm. get it in a good way and make sure it's accurate. Mm-hmm. Um, data scrubbing, of course, is a daily activity when you're, when you're getting it set. Um, a lot of things that are challenging. So then in your experience, what are some tools that have helped you overcome those challenges or can help other business overcome those challenges to really get the advanced analytics they need to actually move the needle and not feel, I mean, we hear it all the time. I'm just overwhelmed by the amount of information. I don't know what to do with it. So what tools can, can help with that? Well, obviously software, you know, I mean, I, I have been doing this long enough. I'm sure anybody of a certain age knows that we live our lives in Excel and, you know, we thought we'd found gold when we started using access. So it's even when you have the data, a lot of times it's disparate systems. And that really is hard to link things up when you have things in multiple locations that almost makes it be manual. So um, the new softwares that we have that allow um, the enterprise wide look of things are are critical in my mind. And um, also, you know, a lot of times as finance people, we are hindered by the cap- or the capacity of our IT teams. You know, if mm-hmm. I have to go and have somebody help me get the data all the time, that is either going to A, make them hate me or I'll just <laughs> quit trying. You know, I mean, it, it's hard. Right. You, you really have to have the right tools that can pull it all together in a way that is not encumbering any one person overly or else you'll just quit tracking it or, or you'll figure out a way to make it not tell you what you want and want it to tell you. So you can quit working so hard to get it. So Mm -hmm. it's, it's really our technology. I think. Yeah. Well, and it's a long way, especially right now. I mean, you can't just walk over to your it team or whoever and say, Hey, can you help me with this? Or can you pull this for me? Like, that's just not how we're not working that way right now. Right. Um, Yeah. So I think that's such, you know, so important. So Uh then, so for pro point, one of the big, you know, pieces that you have, that you've helped implement is NetSuite, correct? Yeah. Yes. Yes. So really quick, before we actually get into ProPoint's use of NetSuite and Suite Analytics and kind of diving into how you use it to make business decisions and, you know, it enables you that kind of, um, you know, autonomy, um, to be able to pull the information you need to do your job really quick. What is the history between ProPoint and NetSuite and you? Yeah. So I, my history with NetSuite start, started before ProPoints did. Um, my job just previous to this one was at a large um, company that had a manufacturing aspect to it. And they were using Epicor, a very large manufacturing um, yes. software that was, um, it was very poorly implemented um, and it just didn't work right. At the same time, the company was transforming into a different business. And so it was actually abandoned. It was scrapped. And through the software selection process, 
um, I found NetSuite and NetSuite covered everything I needed to do at that job. And so I did implement it there first, just the um, financials. Uh, and um, it, it just was such a change from all the, the software I had used up to that point. I had been a consultant for nine years in accounting and finance. So I saw a lot of businesses, a lot of industry, a lot of software. And mm -hmm. for the size company I was at, NetSuite was just a, a really, I, I hate sounding too dramatic, but it really was <laughs> life changing for me. That global search, man, I will never get tired of being able to type something in global search and mm -hmm. find what I'm looking for. So anyway, that's how I became introduced to NetSuite. When it came to ProPoint, they had their case management, our call center tech support was using Zendesk and the sales team was using Salesforce. And we had a homegrown provisioning system called admin. And we had a couple of different integrations between those oh, QuickBooks gosh. we used, but it wasn't even QuickBooks online. It was QuickBooks on a server in Arizona. So it oh, was, gosh. yeah, sketchy at best. <laughs> so the first thing I had to do was come in and replace QuickBooks. I knew that when I took the job, that's part of why I took the job. I love this stuff. Yeah. And so we did the software selection um, as you do in a professional manner. And we have, ProPoint has a unique relationship in their owners because of this multi-location thing I was mentioning. We have a parent-child relationship. Bills mm -hmm. go to the parent, which is the owner, but we sell the product and the services to the store, which is the child. And there were only two softwares that could um, integrate with what we already had and handle that parent child. One was Financial Force and the other was NetSuite. Um, mm. To my comment earlier about needing help from IT, the, there, there were a few differences in, in why it was logical to pick NetSuite, but the biggest one in my mind was that Financial Force was another one of those softwares where I needed either Financial Force to mm. change the configuration for me, or I needed a business analyst at my job and the IT side that would go be to the tables and, you know, make it a required field or whatever. Um, and I, I just couldn't have that. We were a small company. I have to be able to manage those kinds of things. So that, that it was the biggest decision maker in, in selecting NetSuite at that time to replace QuickBooks. Wow. What a story yeah. that I, I love hearing, you know, we talk actually, um, the podcast episode that came out right before this, um, we actually talked about integrations versus replacements, when to do a replacement, when to integrate, what software works for integrations, you know, and so on. And it's funny because this is actually kind of a real life story of like, well, we needed oh to replace, gosh. we needed to replace some of our, you know, antiquated softwares, but we also needed to be able to integrate with what you guys already yep. had going on. So I, I well, love bringing that, you know, into the light and actually having a real life story behind it. Can I take it one step further for you? Please do. We ended up having so much trouble with those integrations that it came to a point where we did an assessment of fixing the integrations or replacing, and we went replacement. And so now we have our Salesforce is on NetSuite. We use a CRM mm -hmm. and we actually got rid of Zendesk and we use case management on NetSuite. So we, go. Um, it, it, it is just night and day. Um, integrations are amazing. And they're one of those technologies that we're thankful for when they came along, but it's still, it's still disparate systems. Sorry about George barking there. Um, <laughs> all good. We're all disparate, working from home. Yeah, still disparate systems still, you know, it's like a black box you have to fix when something goes wrong. So yeah, you're uh, very happy well. with that decision as well. Does your business have trouble managing inventory, projects, or even getting paid on time? Don't let spreadsheets and QuickBooks hold you back. If you want to get your business to a better place, take action now and make the move to NetSuite. Stop paying for multiple systems that don't give you the information you need when you need it. Ditch the spreadsheets and all the old software you've outgrown. Now is the time to upgrade to NetSuite by Oracle, the world's number one cloud business system. NetSuite gives you visibility and control over your financials, HR, inventory, e-commerce, and more. Everything you need, all in one place, instantaneously. Whether you're doing a million or hundreds of millions in revenue, save time and money with NetSuite. Join the over 24,000 companies using NetSuite right now. 
Let NetSuite show you how they'll benefit your business with a free product tour at netsuite.com slash business. Schedule your free product tour right now at netsuite.com slash business. netsuite.com slash business. And I, I do have to ask, so how has NetSuite helped supported ProPoint's continued growth? I mean, what sort of efficiencies were put in place? Um, what sort of change did you see? I'd love to hear a little bit about kind of the after effects. Yeah, it has been just so, so thrilling to watch it happen from a data junkie's point of view. Mm-hmm. Um, again, I, I you told you that we had Zendesk and Salesforce and I was working in NetSuite and we, we did have, an, I can't remember, an integration between Salesforce and NetSuite that, that worked really well, actually. But if I needed anything, you know, any details on a sales order or whatever, I would have to go into Salesforce, which meant I needed a license for mm-hmm. Salesforce. Same with Zendesk. And um, so it tends to hinder any, you know, creativity you might have in terms of getting to the bottom of something or coming up with a process change. And by bringing them all in, everybody that had access to NetSuite could see everything on a customer's record. So they could go into the tab and see when my accounting team would get a call from somebody that said, you know what, your salon check-in didn't work at all last month and I'm mad, I want a credit. Instead of having to call somebody on the support side and saying, do you think it's justified? My accounting team can now not only go to the support tab and see if there was a case opened on salon Mm -hmm. check-in, they could actually listen to the phone call to see if that's really what it was. And you know, you Wow. Don't want to say that people are trying to get credit for nothing sometimes, but <laughs> they do. Yeah. So um, it just made us so much more efficient, self, self-serve, self I call it all the time. We could figure out um, how to service our customers from a, from a, um, from that point of view. And, right. you know, the, what they had purchased their equipment. So my support side has to take the calls when their printer doesn't work. So they could go onto the sales side and see what their purchases were. And they can see that it was a, you know, I don't know what the equipment is, sorry, but yeah, whatever no, receipt fine. printer. Yeah. Oh yeah. I know how to troubleshoot that. Try turning it on or whatever. So yeah. um, it just made everybody have all the information right at their fingertips. Efficiency was huge. Um, it made us way more scalable, especially from an accounting and finance um, accounts receivable side. Mm-hmm. just very scalable. So it, it has really helped us be more efficient. And from an, a, a, I'm a cost center, you know, I can't go out and sell more to contribute to the bottom line, but I mm-hmm. can contribute to the bottom line by getting the efficiencies out of our tools and our technology and stuff like that. So it really did make a big difference. Well, and I, that's actually kind of what I want to dive into next. You know, some, some of the data, the, the way that you're using sweet analytics and workbooks. Mm-hmm. So Tell me first, you know, uh, let's say we're, we're, we have some first time NetSuite users or, or prospects that are interested in NetSuite. Just, can you give us a kind of an overview? Like how are you, how are you able to extract the information you need and then actually use that information to help move the needle for pro point? Yeah, it's, um, so easy. And, and the word extract is kind of not correct because the data is already in there. I don't have to extract (laughs) anything. It's, it is a magical button where I, you know, I go over to my, um, sweet analytics and I open a data set and it's there. Um, we spent a lot of time. I spent a lot of time, you know, there, there are things that are going to be on a customer record, no matter what your industry is, but Mm -hmm. we added a lot of fields to track things, um, that are unique to our industry and what we wanted to see from the salons that are using our software. And once those, those data points are in and captured, which is typically on onboarding, they're there forever. And Mm -hmm. everything after that is built through the process, the invoicing every month, bam, it's there. The support cases that they have opened and closed and resolved are there. Um, I create a data set that pulls in whatever it is I'm looking at and it's there. Once I have saved it, named it, I just open it again. So um, it's always real time. It's mm-hmm. always the most current information. It's never any more of this. Oh, when did you run this, Cheryl? Cause I had a big sale last night. Are you sure you got that? You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's yeah. there. If you have clicked close one on that opportunity, it's on the customer record. So, um, it, it just is magical. I can't give it any other words. It's magical. <laughs> well, and I, 
I love that because I love the word magical and I love that yeah. that's how you're using, you know, you're using it to describe NetSuite, but right. again, so let's, I want to, I, I, I'm painting this picture. I'm a, you know, I'm a, a growing business founder, you know, pretty small right now, mm-hmm. um, looking at NetSuite. So what would you say if you could like pick the top three, what are the major benefits of using Suite Analytics workbooks? Um, the, the three top things, I think one of them I already said is the real-time information. Right. Um, the second thing is that I can create a workbook and I can share it. You know, there's a share function. I can share it with the appropriate people, send them a link and say, here's your, your information. Every time you want to see it, just click here. You don't have to ask me so they Mm -hmm. can be self-sufficient. Not that I don't want to do the work for them, but (laughs) you know, they, they can just go get it themselves. That, Mm -hmm. that is huge in a small company. Um, And then also, you know, the third one, I think anybody in finance has dealt with is another thing I said, which is version control. Um, Mm -hmm. Did this have the new product in it or whatever? It is always exactly the data that is there. There there just is none of that debating. You know, people do tend to debate the data in a report that you hand them or email them or print or whatever, but they're looking at the data source and it's organized in a way they can um, get what they need and trust what's there. Right. Right. Um, Very consistent. Actually, that's great. That's great. Um, you actually now have over 200 workbooks. I think I read. <laughs> <laughs> um, saying that because it's almost embarrassing. Um, and it's embarrassing because the way that happens, like any kid in a candy store, they're grabbing everything. Like, oh my God, I want this. Oh my God, I want to try this. And so mm-hmm. I just went crazy to begin with. And I was doing, you know, just very individual workbooks. And so it got out of hand. Yeah. Um, but I do have, you know, my top 10 that I use daily or weekly that, mm-hmm. um, that we all kind of settle into our routines. But, um, you know, I use uh, one of them, if I can tell this story, I, one of the ones that I use the most, um, I've always, as, a, as a, the finance person, you watch accounts receivable, but in mm-hmm. NetSuite, um, yeah, of course I could watch. Oh, here's the, the, I, the very important detail in this. We have almost 6,000 stores and we invoice by line or by store. So every mm-hmm. month I have, you know, 6,000 lines of, um, invoices. And wow. so to watch an accounts receivable aging is just not manageable. I can go and pick out the, the big numbers, but I can't look at every invoice every month to see how old it is. So right. I started looking at customer payments instead. So I, I created a data set that pulled transactions, specifically customer payments. And I set up a workbook that then pivots those by type. So ACH, check, cash, whatever it is, and by month. So then I just kind of watched that. And you know, from any given month, it should be fairly consistent. And actually, I look at that so much that I ended up putting that in one of the... Um, whatever we call those, the window is on my dashboard. That's on mm-hmm. my dashboard. So every, every, at least a couple times a week, I look at my customer payment trends to see how they're, they're coming in for the month, which of course was a, a very important thing during this last year of COVID. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I want to get into that. Um, actually, because you yeah. being in salon management software, I mean, 2020 presented a lot of challenges, right? Oh gosh, it was awful. So, like, how were you using this data to help solve problems during that time? Yeah, it just, um, it was crazy. The whole, everybody lived through it. They all know how how crazy it was, but Mm -hmm. I know that, um, Raj, who is the CEO that, that went out and bought Roger software development and created ProPoint. One of the reasons he chose, um, hair salon software was that haircuts are recession proof. And he thought it was a good (laughs) stable business. Yeah. I mean, and that's logical. And we always just kind of it made us a little bit sassy. Well, we're recession proof. We're fine. You know, well, the the pandemic came and things started closing down. And I'll never forget sitting at the conference table going, they're not going to close down hair salons. Everybody needs haircuts. Well, you know, three days later, our 6,000 salons were at zero. They were all closed. Yeah. And then, of course, you just are looking around going, I, I don't even know what to do right now. And so I started grasping at data. Data is my comfort food, so to speak. And I was just trying to figure out what, what can I look at? And when I was talking about these, these kitchen sink data points that I pick and, 
you don't always know whether they're going to perform for you or not. I was kind of saying that earlier. Mm -hmm. One of the pieces of data that I picked actually came from our provisioning software and it would log the date of the last ticket in a salon that was using our software. So my assumption became if there is a ticket in a salon, that must mean it's open, right? Right. So I started every day, I would look at how many salons had a last ticket date of the previous day. And slowly I could start to see that number coming up. So of course that started to give me comfort. Oh, here it comes. It's, it's coming yeah. back. We just have to hang on and watch them come back. Well, the second thing that came from that was, you know, it took a little longer than I thought it might when I saw them turning on. And then of course you very quickly have to think of things like, you know, 6,000 salons were closed. They're not making any money. Am I really going to be able to count on them paying their bills? And now mm -hmm. I've got a cash flow issue to deal with. So I used a different workbook to actually um, connect a, an invoice table to my customer records. Mm -hmm. And I based it on the previous month's invoicing. So 6,000 stores times whatever per month. And I could set up a workbook with a pivot that summarized the dollar amount by state. So remember that like California closed for longer and then it opened right. the next and then Ontario is closed still right now. Well, I could go to my workbook and see, you know, I've got 375 stores in California and that dollar amount that's at risk on a monthly basis is whatever, 50 grand. So if California is closed for three months, I have to be able to wait, you know, they're going to be slow right. pay, perhaps no pay. And so that was, you know, it, it, it was absolutely 100% how I could make cash decisions was knowing how much was at risk of me not getting. And, you know, we did have a lot of bad debt and probably still will have more, but um, I was able to lead conservatively, you know, we, we, anything we don't do right now is going to get us further down the road and give our customers the opportunity to get back on their feet because you know how sad would it be if we go under when they're right, ready to come back, right you know yeah, I, exactly I'm be there for them to give them a yeah. chance to be there for me so um it was just amazing it was just amazing to be able to figure out how to do that and yeah. and get a real live these dollars are at risk look right so yeah, yeah. make some real-time decisions about how to elongate that runway right yep. Exactly. Wow. What a story. I I mean, I, it's, it's hard to hear. I mean, it's like, gosh, thinking back to this time last year and all of the, right. you know, yes. concern that was around it. Um, what a story. I mean, I, I appreciate you sharing that. I know that's a, what a frenzy to be in, but, uh, but interesting to hear nonetheless. Um, yeah. so, you know, to summarize here, what would you tell another finance leader about NetSuite and about Suite Analytics. What excites you the most? You know what? I um, I, I hope you don't mind. I got to tell this story quick too. I, yes. I discovered analytics by accident. Huh? Um, when we were implementing the case management and CRM, we signed up for uh, uh, the training subscription model you had then. And I love to learn. So, and we had so many credits of training each quarter. And so before I even told anybody we had it, I took the manual thing or the list of courses. And I was like, oh my gosh, I saw this sweet analytics and it had the word data in there. I was like, oh my God, I've never heard of this. I didn't even know <laughs> you had it. And so I took the, the course and it, it, it just was everything. What I would say to other finance people, especially that have been in the industry for a while is mm -hmm. it is everything you have been wishing you had all this time, because it's all within your system. It's the real time information. You can add your formulas. It's not exactly Excel, but it really offers you a lot of those things. And it's right there at your fingertips, the efficiency, um, accuracy, consistency. It's all of those things. And again, I don't have to go to other people. I don't have to wait for the report to run overnight and email to me. It's all yeah. at my fingertips. Wow. Well, yeah. Cheryl, it will change the way you work and share data. 
I love that. I really appreciate you taking the time to, to chat with me. And I know our listeners will really appreciate these. You had some amazing stories and I just thank you on that note. Thank you so much for being here with us. You're welcome. It was my pleasure. Thank you for having me. You heard her. For all you finance peeps out there, Sweet Analytics is everything you've ever wished for, right at your fingertips. Thank you so much to Cheryl Arsvold for joining us and providing such great insight. I also want to shout out to our editing crew over at Lampstand, and of course, all of you, as always, for tuning in. If you like what you heard, don't forget, rate, review, and subscribe. Bye. You just listened to the NetSuite podcast. Be sure to tune in every week with more NetSuite developments, stories, and insights into the benefits of one integrated system to help you run your business.